presentations are dedicated to my uh, fellows, my residents who are really sincerely preparing the uh, slides for me. Okay, so now the clock is just one minute um, before 9, 8.59. I'm going to start the talk and it's going to be uh, parasympathetic ganglions of head and neck. So that's the, going to be the topic. So welcome Dr. Vinita Vijay and oh, my friend John Bennett has joined. It's a great time. You see, this is uh, Sri Harsha, Dr. Bennett. You wanted to know who is uh, this IT guy. This guy is super lative in his IT stuff. And if you want to actually uh, contact some uh, uh, regarding some real nuances of uh, uh, internet technology, this is the guy. And uh, he helps me in so many things. Of course, Dr. John wanted to talk with you, Dr. Sri Harsha. You can actually uh, converse with them. Okay, so let us get started uh, without much ado. Uh, now we are 9 o'clock. We are going to start. It's Indian Standard Time, 9 o'clock. Now, introduction. <clears throat> uh, parasympathetic nervous system is one of the two divisions of the autonomic nervous system. The other one being sympathetic nervous system, of course. So, it's parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous systems. The autonomic nervous system controls all the involuntary activities of the body. So for, I'm starting like, you know, to teach the beginner also. So it controls the involuntary movements of the body. The parasympathetic nervous system controls the rest and digest uh, system of the body, while the sympathetic uh, nervous system, digestive system of the body, while the sympathetic nervous system controls the fight and flight response. The activities controlled by parasympathetic nervous system are salivation, lacrimation, digestion, defecation, urination, and sexual arousal. So this is a long question, so I'm putting the heading. If you get this parasympathetic ganglions of head and neck, you should start like the introduction and then go on to this slide and then go on. If you can draw this, it will be great. Uh, the parasympathetic system, you see, just draw the uh, the brain and then just the uh, spinal cord and then you can just draw the pupil, the heart, the airways, the liver, the blood vessels, the digestive system, uterus and the urinary system. Okay, so here we are. I'm now going to go for the ganglion. So this is what we are going to discuss today, the ganglions, the parasympathetic ganglions of head and neck. A ganglion is a group of neuron uh, cell bodies in the peripheral nervous system. The ganglia are primarily made up of somata and dendritic structures which are bundled or connected. So you have a bundle of uh, nerves which are connected and that is a ganglia. The ganglia provide relay points and intermediary connections between different neurological structures in the body such as peripheral and central nervous system. So it's actually a relay point. So you should understand that these are actually uh, relay systems. Ganglia often interconnect with other ganglia to form a complex system of ganglia known as a plexus. So they may ask you, what's a plexus? Plexus means the ganglia often interconnect with other ganglia. If two ganglia connect together, they form a complex system of ganglia which are called the plexus. In the somatic nervous system, this includes dorsal root ganglia and the trigeminal ganglia along, among a few others. Okay, a pseudoganglion is localized thickening of a main part or trunk of a nerve that has the appearance of a ganglia but has only nerve fibers and no nerve cell bodies. So they will definitely try to uh, ask you if you are appearing for the VIVA, the gold medal exam they'll ask you what is a pseudoganglion. So it doesn't have nerve cell bodies. So that's the pseudoganglion. Okay, now the nerve that supplies the ganglion is called the preganglionic fiber. So this is the preganglionic fiber. I'm using my cursor. Of course, you're not able to see that. So that's a preganglionic fiber. That's a ganglion here. And then you have the postganglionic fiber. And then you have the sense organ which it supplies. This is the simplest version. You can, you can take this diagram. Most of these slides, you can actually make it as uh, screenshots and just you can take it for your exams. You can just write this for your exams uh, because they're all taken from very standard textbooks. The nerve that carries the supply for a ganglion to a sense organ is called the postganglionic fiber. So you have the nucleus, 
the preganglionic fiber, the ganglion, and then the postganglionic fiber and the sense organ. So this is how uh, the the ganglionic uh, fibers are now. Parasympathetic ganglions in the head and neck are there are four parasympathetic ganglions. What are the ganglions? Number one, the ciliary ganglion. Second is the otic ganglion. Third is the pterygoparatine ganglion, and fourth is the submandibular ganglion. So you might be asked in your exam any one ganglion as a short notes, or you can be asked as an essay, uh, as you know you can write uh, the ganglions, parasympathetic ganglions of the neck. So remember the mnemonic COPS easily, easy to remember because you know the COP COPS is ciliary, otic, pterygoparatine, uh, um, and submandibular ganglion. So you can uh, brilliantly rem remember this uh, uh, mnemonic COPS. Okay, the parasympathetic cranial nerves are <clears throat> cranial nerve three, cranial nerve seven, nine, and ten. The three, seven, nine cranial nerves are a part of the parasympathetic ganglions, head and neck, while the cranial nerve 10 give ganglions in the trunk. So, what are the cranial nerves which take part in formation of ganglion of head and neck? Three, seven, and 10, uh, nine. Three, seven, and nine. Remember this, three, seven, nine. Three, seven, nine, all odd numbers. Tips to remember, preganglionic parasympathetic fibers of the head and neck can be from cranial nerve 3, 7 or 9. But all postganglionic parasympathetic fibers of the head and neck are derived from cranial nerve 5. So it's so easy to remember. So you see 3, 7, 9. So you have 5 in between. So it is, is the tip. The preganglionic fibers are from 3, 7, 9. But the postganglionic fiber is from the trigeminal nerve. The nerve that relates to the ganglion, preganglionic nerve is called the functional nerve. The nerve that relates from the ganglion to the sense organ, postganglionic is called the topographic nerve. So you should remember uh, what is a topographic nerve, what is a functional nerve. Functional nerve is preganglionic and the topographic nerve is the postganglionic. So you should uh, clearly understand this. Now preganglionic fibers, so cranial nerve 3, that is the oculomotor nerve, giving off the ciliary ganglion, the ninth nerve, the aortic ganglion. The seventh nerve is stereoparatine ganglion and submandibular ganglion. So this is free ganglion. Three, seven and nine I told you. So pterygopartan ganglion, submandibular ganglion by cranial nerve seven, that is the facial nerve. The ninth nerve, the glossopharyngeal nerve, aortic ganglion and the oculomotor nerve is the ciliary ganglion. Postganglionic fibers, are uh, all from the C, uh, the, the fifth nerve, you know, the ciliary ganglion is uh, V1, pterygopalatine ganglion is V2, aortic and submandibular ganglion is V3. So how easy it is to remember, you see, it's so made so easy. So the preganglionic fibers from 3, 9 and 7 and postganglionic is V1, V2 and V3. Well, the nuclei of the parasympathetic ganglion belong to the general visory, visual afferent, afferent category. So it's called the general visceral efferent category. There are four nuclei in general visceral efferent, namely Edinger Westphal nucleus of third. So Edinger, you can have a short note on Edinger Westphal nucleus alone. So please remember that. Second is superior salivatory nucleus. Third, that is the seventh. The ninth gives inferior salivatory nucleus, and dorsal nucleus of vagus is uh, tenth now. Now let us go on to each ganglion, the ciliary ganglion. So the, uh, you can be, I, as I told you, can be asked short notes of every ganglion separately or uh, parasympathetic ganglions of ENT, of head and neck. You can ask, uh, you can be asked the question like that. Now let us go to ciliary ganglion. The parasympathetic ganglion, it's a parasympathetic ganglion located just behind the eye in the posterior orbit. Measures 1 to 2 millimeters in diameter and contains approximately 2500 neurons. It is the primary tract for controlling the size of the pupil. Now, the nucleus of the pathway is derived from the Eringer Westphal nucleus, which is located in the midbrain at the level of the superior colliculus. The Eringer Westphal nucleus occupies the midbrain of, uh, of a V shaped oculomotor nucleus, while the periphery of the nucleus is motor. The nerve exits the brain stem at the level of the interpeduncular fossa to the subarachnoid space 
towards the roof of the cavernous sinus. It runs parallel to the posterior communicating artery. Of course, I will show you a lot of uh, videos of this. All these videos are going to come later uh, as I deal with uh, the later episodes. You will see a lot more of videos. Now, the nerve then divides into an upper and lower division at the level of the superior orbital fissure where the parasympathetic fibers travel along the lower division and along the fibers supplying the inferior oblique. This forms a preganglionic parasympathetic pathway of the ciliary ganglion. Now, the pupillary fibers of the pupillary fibers of the nerve derive its blood supply from the pile plexus on the surface of the nerve. The core is supplied by the vasa nervosum, and the ganglion derives its parasympathetic supply from the plexus around the ophthalmic artery. Now, here we are. The pictorial representation of the oculomotor nucleus, Edinger Westphal nucleus, and uh, the blue color shows the Edinger Westphal nucleus. You see here that's the Edinger Westphal nucleus, and the parasympathetic fibers, the nerve, runs right between the SCA and PCA. That's the SCA and PCA here. PCA is here, SCA is here, and the third nerve goes. That's the basilar, the ICA is here, and of course the two vertebrals are here. This is the pict pictorial representation of the nucleus, Edinger Westphal nucleus. The postganglionic fibers pathway starts from the nasovestillary nerve, which is a branch of the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve. So this is V1. As I told you, postganglionic is V1, V2, and V3. Now the nasovestillary nerve gives short ciliary nerve, which then innervate the sphincter pupillae, uh, papillae, and the ciliary muscles and cause constriction of the pupils. Hence, the functional nerve of the ciliary ganglion is the oculomotor nerve, while the topographic nerve is the nasociliary nerve. I think this is the simplest you can actually uh, make to understand the uh, reflex pathway. So the uh, uh, the uh, oculomotor nerve and the nasociliary nerve. Now I am going to pictorially represent this ganglion, ciliary ganglion. If you want to uh, take a screenshot, you can take uh, take a screenshot of this. Preganglionic Edinger Westphal nucleus, lower division of the third nerve, along with the fibers, uh, 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 and then you can see here the ciliary ganglion is here, and then the nasal ciliary nerve branch of the V1 goes to the eye. So that's postganglionic. So preganglionic, postganglionic. So what's the applied anatomy? Then you should write, if you ask ciliary ganglion, you should write applied anatomy also. The anatomical location of the nerve makes it susceptible to very aneurysms of the scar and the PCA. So you can have aneurysms which is uh, compressing over it. PCOM is one of the one of the most common arteries to develop an aneurysm at either end, making the nerve. Susceptible. In case of injury. The nerve, the parasympathetic fibers are cavernous sinus thrombosis affects the parasympathetic fibers of ciliary. Ganglion first followed by the classmate as well. Um, thanks for being there. Now you can see here that the aortic ganglion. is a small oval shaped flattened parasympathetic ganglion. It is nucleus and then uh, of the glossopharyngeal nerve, the inferior nucleus of the nervous uh, nucleus. Salivatorius inferior is a cluster of neurons in the pontine tegmentum, dorsal part of the 
the pawns just above uh, and then pass via the tympanic plexus and lesser petrosal nerve uh, to the aortic ganglion. See how beautiful it is. This forms the preganglionic pathway of the aortic ganglion. So we will pictorially represent it. Lesser superficial petrosal nerve is a sympathetic supply from the plexus around the middle meningeal artery. Now let us see this. This is, you can you can actually take. A screenshot of this slide, uh, the most important slide of the aortic ganglion. What? Number one, inferior salivate nucleus, aortic ganglion. If they write immediately, I am sure uh, people like Professor Anthony will definitely keep asking the rounds also. Uh, what is uh, preganglionic for aortic ganglion? Inferior salivary nucleus, second glossopharyngeal nerve, there is Jacobson's nerve. Then tympanic plexus, lesser superficial petrosal nerve goes to aortic ganglion. From the uh, applied anatomy, the main anatomical application of the optic ganglion is free syndrome. So, free syndrome can be asked as a short. Giving the name free syndrome. So you can actually get a googly by actually this question like bilarga syndrome. Then you might be thinking, what is this? I've never seen this question like bilarga syndrome. Heard of this you term. That is why we do. Free syndrome often results as a side effect of surgeries or near the parotid gland or due to the injury to the auricular temporal nerve which passes through the parotid gland in the early part of it. Scores. The nerve carries parasympathetic fibers to the parotid uh, Salivary gland, sympathetic fiber. Without mentioning the term submandibular ganglion, he'll say Langley's ganglion. So, what is Langley's ganglion? Langley's ganglion is submandibular ganglion. Submandibular ganglion is the small, is, a, is small and fusiform in shape. It is situated above the deep portion of the submandibular gland on the hyoglossus uh, muscle, not hypo, uh, yeah, it's a hyoglossus muscle near the posterior border of the mylohyoid muscle. So posterior to the myelohyoid is the hyoglossus and the ganglion hangs by two nerve filaments from the lower branch of the lingual nerve itself a branch of the mandibular nerve. So you know I, I dealt with the mandibular nerve as the first episode and now you know where to fix that lingual nerve. So I told you the lingual nerve. The preganglionic parasympathetic fibers are from the superior salivatory nucleus in the upper border of the pons, so superior salivatory nucleus. It then travels via the facial nerve into the coronary branch and the coronary then merges with the nerve sheath of the lingual nerve which then goes on to supply the preganglionic pre fibers with submandibular ganglion. Hence, in this ganglion, both the pre and the post ganglionic fibers are supplied by the lingual nerve. So you see how beautiful here alone in the submandibular ganglion, the preganglionic, 
and the postganglionic fibers are the lingual nerve. Now, the postganglionic parasympathetic fibers are also carried by the lingual nerve. Even though preganglionic fibers are delivered by the lingual nerve, the functional nerve is still considered as the cauda tympani nerve. Even though the preganglionic supplied the lingual nerve, the it is actually the cauda tympani is considered to be um, so. Uh, I am getting a message from Professor John. Are other people getting interruption in video transmission, or is it only me? Um, can you can you just answer him because uh, Professor John is from Miami, from USA. Can you answer him saying that uh, your transmission is good or bad, so I can uh, stop here and maybe uh, wait for some people to comment? Here the streaming is very good, uh, Professor John. I'm not sure why you're not getting the transmission. So the uh, so Dr. Manish Verma has uh, typed good transmission. So Mutam Will Silambu has also uh, typed that it's it's a good transmission. I I, I am waiting for some people to actually answer. Ah, video going great. Mutamil Salamu, no problem here, it's perfect, no, it's smooth video. I'm sorry then, Dr. John, if there's a problem with your your side, from your side. Okay, so here we are, the postganglionic parasympathetic fibers, the oral mucosa and submandibular and sublingual salivary glands, they are secretomotor to these glands. Some of the postganglionic fibers reach the sub sublingual gland after they re-enter the lingual nerve. The topographic nerve is the lingual nerve, so clear, clear, clear. Sympathetic fibers are from the external carotid plexus via the facial artery and its branches. Okay, now let us go in for uh, this. Uh, this is a screen chart. You can actually take a, a, a screenshot of this or a picture of this because this is going to be the uh, uh, Langley's ganglion. If you want to write Langley's ganglion, this is what you're going to write. Now, here we are superior salivary nucleus, facial nerve, cauda tympani. Cauda tympani joins lingual nerve, lingual nerve. Then the submandibular ganglion. Then goes for the postganglionic fibers, lingual nerve. Again, the submandibular, sublingual uh, ganglion, uh, sublingual glands. So that's postganglionic. So preganglionic, postganglionic. You see, in one slide, you can completely uh, uh, write the whole answer if they ask you Langley's ganglion. So applied anatomy in case of Bell's palsy at uh, site B, as mentioned in the class of facial nerve. Uh, above the level of the um, cord tympani nerve, there is a decrease in salivation. So we mentioned that in your uh, uh, the second class on facial nerve, and that will be a decrease in salivation. Complete loss of salivation is not seen because parotid gland deri uh, derives its supply from the ninth cranial nerve. Now let us go on to Meckel's ganglion. <clears throat> so this is another important exam question. Again and again, they're asking you short notes. Uh, please, please understand this and remember this. Meckel's ganglion, uh, uh, they will say Langley's ganglion, Meckel's ganglion. Meckel's ganglion is pterygoparotid ganglion. Please, uh, you have to remember this. It's the largest of the parasympathetic ganglions. It lies in very close relationship to the Meckel's cave, next to the foramen rotundum, where the maxillary nerve enters. It is a parasympathetic ganglion found in the pterygoparotid fossa. It is found in the part and fossa. See how beautiful uh, uh, diagram. You can actually take a screenshot of this. And of course, you can actually, um, um, uh, in fact, in my dissections, even in JNA, I in fact show the ganglion so beautifully. Uh, and uh, this is the trigeminal uh, ganglion. That's uh, that's actually the, uh, the, the maxillary division of trigeminal nerve. And you see how this VDN nerve comes here, of course, we will discuss that now. The preganglionic fibers, the preganglionic fibers start from the lacrimal nucleus, which lies just superior to the superior salivatory nucleus along the upper border of the pons. So, lacrimal nucleus. And then travels along the facial nerve into the greater superficial petrosal nerve. So, you know, in the first geno, you, know, you get the greater superficial petrosal nerve. And then that greater superficial petrosal nerve joins with the deep petrosal nerve which is the uh, plexus around the internal carotid artery and they both join to form the VDN nerve or the nerve of the pterygoid canal. 
Then the deep petrosal nerve is formed by the sympathetic plexus around the internal carotid artery. This forms the sympathetic innervation of the ganglion. The median nerve, not median, median nerve supplies preganglionic fibers to the pterygopartan ganglion. So postganglionic fibers are relayed by the maxillary nerve, the V2. It is carried along the zygomaticotemporal nerve which connects the maxillary nerve to the lacrimal nerve. So it connects the maxillary nerve to the lacrimal nerve, zygomaticotemporal nerve. The lacrimal nerve then carries the postganglionic fibers to the lacrimal gland. The functional nerve being the GSPN and the topographic nerve being, so I told you, you should know what is the functional nerve, what is the topographic nerve. In the first part of our lecture, we already talked about the functional nerve and the topographic nerve. So please, my dear friends, you should remember. Now you have to now see this. This is a fantastic representation of this whole thing. Lacrimal nucleus, facial nerve, GSPN, GSPN plus deep petrosal nerve, plexus around the internal carotid artery, forms the median nerve. Median nerve is the nerve of the pterygoid canal. This is pterygopartan ganglion. This is preganglionic. Postganglionic, you have V2, maxillary nerve, zygomaticotemporal nerve, zygomaticotemporal nerve, lacrimal nerve, and lacrimal gland. So, 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 so simple. This is all about the ganglions of the head and neck. Applied anatomy, the pterygopartan ganglion is theorized uh, to be a component of uh, for a group of headache disorders classified as trigeminal autonomic cephalgias, which present as unilateral headaches with psilateral autonomic features. Blockage of the ganglion with local anesthetic, um, clinically referred to as phenopartan ganglion block, may be performed transcutaneously with a small needle or topically via the nose with a local anesthetic soaked swab. The topical uh, SPG is used for treatment of persistent migraines and cluster headaches. Now, acute migraine he attacks as well as other primary headaches disorders like cluster headaches are often associated with signs of parasympathetic activation. Blocking the sphenopartan ganglion, which is a major parasympathetic outflow to the cranial and facial structures, is a reasonable target to help relieve pain and autonomic features seen in these disorders. Now, loss of lacrimation is seen in case of Bell's palsy at the level of the geniculate ganglion due to the lack of preganglionic supply to the pterygopartan ganglion. Loss of lacrimation is also seen in case of Ramsey Hunt syndrome. Okay, now let us go on to the summary. It is uh, Dr. Prakash Munka says it's a very difficult topic. Believe me, this is the simplest topic. It's so easy. The next. Five, five slides if you memorize these five slides it it will it, the ciliary ganglion is nasociliary nerve and functional nerve is oculomotor nerve pterygopartan ganglion is maxillary nerve so v1 v2 v3 see see here v1 v so ciliary ganglion cops i told you ciliary ganglion pterygopartan ganglion uh, otic ganglion submandibular ganglion cops c o p s and then here is V1, V2, V3, V, uh, V3 again, lingual nerve. So maxillary nerve, auricular temporal. And here is the 3, 7, 9, and 7. So 3, 7, 9, and 7. Now, this is the final uh, five slides. Please remember this preganglionic Edinger Westphal nucleus. And then lower division of the third nerve along the fibers. And then going on to the ciliary ganglion. And then postganglionic nasociliary nerve branch to V1. So that's the first ganglion, ciliary ganglion. Next will be the uh, otic ganglion, inferior salivary nucleus, glossopharyngeal nerve, Jacobson's nerve, tympanic plexus, lesser superficial petrosal nerve, then otic ganglion going to the uh, uh, trunk of the mandibular nerve, posterior division of uh, uh, V3, auricular temporal nerve, parotid. So this is uh, simply easy to remember. So inferior salivary nucleus from the glossopharyngeal nerve, Jacobson's nerve, tympanic plexus, recess superficial petrosal nerve, otic ganglion going toward, towards the auricular temporal nerve. Now the, the third, impo, third, fourth slide which I am going to put, 
superior salivatory nucleus this is for the langley's ganglion or the submandibular ganglion superior salivatory nucleus facial nerve caudal tympanic nerve lingual nerve and then you go to the submandibular ganglion lingual nerve and then so here the pre and the post ganglionic are the uh, lingual nerve but you have to remember caudal tympanic is going to be pre ganglionic when you talk about it now the last one again a screenshot for you you can take this uh, uh, so this is for the pterygopalatine ganglion lacrimal nucleus going for the facial nerve the gspn and the deep petrosal nerve flex around the internal carotid artery forming the median nerve pterygopalatine uh, ganglion going through the maxillary nerve zygomatic or temporal nerve lacrimal nerve and the lacrimal gland that's post ganglionic so that is so simple that is that is all in this class so this is what you're going to write this is what they're going to ask you and this is what you're going to write so with this i uh, complete this class and i hope that you really really enjoyed and understood the pathway of the ganglions namely the ciliary ganglion the um, the aortic uh, cops aortic ganglion the uh, uh, langley's ganglion and of course the submandibular and the uh, the pterygopalatine ganglion <clears throat> now so we are now finished up with this so we are going to have the next coming week we are going to have three important topics clinical topics namely we are going to have autosclerosis complications of CSA. complications and i hope um, you will enjoy all the episodes with me thank you very much and have a good night thank you bye bye